It's me, Undead Viking. I'm here with another video review. The game that I am reviewing today is called Raid Pirates Plunder. And this is a game that I was actually uh, made aware of uh, by the publisher when they asked if I was willing to do a video to support their Kickstarter. And because it was about pirates, I really didn't have a, a lot of trouble saying yes due to the fact that I really enjoy the pirate theme. I like that idea of it. I've always liked pirate movies. I like pirate video games. I've spent way too much time uh, playing Assassin's Creed, that most recent one that came out on my PlayStation 4. And um, if you look back, one of my earlier videos, I did a really, really long video about Merchants and Marauders, one of my uh, favorite games of all time. And so I was really excited to give this game a try, and I was even more excited to give this game a try uh, after I read the rules, and I saw that it was kind of a light-hearted, family-friendly game, and because because a lot of the the the, the pirate games uh, that I enjoy, uh, like Merchants and Marauders and uh, Lords of the Spanish Main and uh, Blackbeard and things like that, uh, they're very hyper-intensive rules, and they're they're you know just more difficult. And my daughter and I enjoy the pirate movies and things like that, and uh, my son really, uh, who's probably too young to play the game, and he is, but my son really enjoys pirate cartoons and things like that, and we watch those stuff, that stuff together. And I was really looking forward to something that was a little more family-friendly, uh, that still held a really nice pirate theme for myself, and so it's something that uh, my wife and my daughter and I could play and enjoy. And lo and behold, we've been having a heck of a lot of fun with this. I've also been playing it uh, as kind of like a filler game uh, with my game group, where we're waiting for people to show up, or we're waiting for, uh, like, after the game, game night's winding down, you just want to play something kind of mindless and talk about the other games you played. And um, not that this game is, like, like got no meat to it or anything. That's that's some cool, interesting choices and things like that. But um, I we've I really enjoyed the heck out of it. So why don't I show you how to play Raid Pirates Plunder, and then I'll come back and I'll tell you why I like it uh, in more detail, and and then we'll go from there. And uh, hopefully at some point along the way, you'll figure out whether or not this is a game you want to add to your uh, gaming collection, and then you can go to the Kickstarter project and you can back it. All right. So here you go. How to play Raid Pirates Plunder. Alright, this is the game of Raid Pirates Plunder. I've set the game up, and this design that I set up for my hexes is completely up to the person that is playing the game. Uh, the rules themselves have suggested setups or whatever like that, but you can just let your imagination go wild and do whatever you want. Like, I've let my daughter do that, and she's come up with a lot of um, less than uh, like normal shapes, I guess. She's drawn spirals and things like that that she thought would be cool. But that's fine, whatever. You can kind of do whatever you want with this. And, and run with it. So uh, this is, each one of these tiles has, uh, like most of them are just these blank tiles. Like here, I'll show you one of these. It's just a C tile. And this one actually has a lot more obstacles than most of them do. You can see on the edges these, uh, these tiles are impassable. It doesn't matter what they are. You know, this is like a, a sandbar. That's a sunken ship. Uh, the, this is a reef over here. But, you know, some of them actually have, you know, like, giant squids and things like that but i mean they're all basically the same thing they just you can't move through them uh well normally there are cards you can get that will allow you to break the rules but i'll explain that in just a little bit uh so what the game is is each person starts in a home port and then like these are the home ports and that's like kind of a neutral spot where even if you're there uh with um, a if you happen to have a merchant ship that you've captured, uh, if a, if the navy ship, which is represented by this pawn here, if the navy ship happens to land on top of you, it, it it can't do anything to you. So you're safe on the port, but you can't ever stop moving. You have to move on your turn. Uh, you can't just camp out and wait for things to happen or things to come to you. So you have to be moving around the board. Some of the other spots on the board, this is Black Bart's Cove. I'll pick this up here. Um, Black Bart's Cove. Uh, is where you need to go and deliver the merchant ships that you've captured. And then you get you, you turn them over. These are the merchant ships, by the way. Uh, you turn those over after you capture them, and then it gives you a certain amount of money uh, for capturing them. Uh, the fort here in the middle, this is where the Navy ship starts out and moves out uh, and moves off looking for uh, you, the pirates, as the game continues. There's one last base. This is the tavern down here. Um, the tavern's unique ability is, is that if you travel through the tavern on your your turn 
when it is the Navy ship's turn to go, and the Navy ship moves after every, but every person's turn, when it is the Navy ship's turn to go, it moves towards the tavern instead of what is rolled on the die. You may have noticed that these tiles have numbers that surround 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so you're going to be rolling a die to determine where, which direction the merchant ships go and which direction the Navy ship goes. And it also should be mentioned that, like, um, when you set this up, you don't have to set it up so, like, the tiles' uh, numbers match by any means. It, it can be completely random, uh, and so you don't have to, you know, that's not the purpose you, that, that they, the numbers have. You don't, you're not trying to mix, match them all up. It's just a completely random uh, setup, if you will. So, uh, these are the resource cards, and I'll explain those in just a little bit, but I just want to make sure, so you might be wondering what those are down there. Um, I'm just going to explain turns. Turns are really simple. Um, on your turn, you, you as a pirate can move one or two spaces. As I said, you can't not move. You have to be able to move two spaces. And you can't move on to where the Navy ship is. You know, it's just that's not a possibility. So um, if you're ever in a situation where you can't move because of, like, uh, barriers and what have you, and the Navy ship is uh, right next to you, uh, you can't the Navy ship will move instead of you, and then you don't get to move that turn. That's the only time you ever get to not move on a turn. But anyway, so uh, the situation you have is you just move twice, and so if you can land on a, a, a merchant ship, you can take control of it. So this person could go one, two, like that. And they would land on this merchant ship, and now when they move, they'll drag this merchant ship along with them, and they're going to try to end up and get to Black Bart's Cove. After they've gone, uh, they will roll a die, and this will determine the direction that the ships go uh, that aren't being captured. So we'll roll a die, and we'll get a two. And so you, you just there you see you can see a two, and and then the merchant ships will move one space in that direction if they are able. So this one, the two is there. So this merchant ship will move one and go on to the fort like so, and this merchant ship would move this direction. But it can't because of the fact that there's a barrier right there. So it'll stay in its spot. The Navy ship will move two spaces in that direction. And they'll go here and stop because there's a barrier right there. And they can't move any further in that direction. So now it's kind of a predicament for the, 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 the green uh, pirate now because of the fact that you know, they're worried they got to get out or whatever. And the Navy ship is blocking their way. Now, in a certain, if a Navy ship ever lands on top of you... Uh, that you and and takes what you you get sent back to your port and then the mer you lose the merchant ship you're unable to uh, control it. If like I said you take a merchant ship and on your turn you're able to deliver it to the port like so, you can then turn the merchant ship over, take the cash reward that is on the back. In this case, it is a thousand uh, gold coins or dollars or what have you. And you get a thousand bucks. And um, the, the the game that I got, it came with uh, paper money, but I'm sure the the, the money uh, will be better in the actual uh, printed version. And, and like as with any prototype, you know, I'm sure that the components will change when it when it is published. And now it goes back to port. And and so once you're in port, that's when you can purchase resource cards. And resource cards are these things down here. And certain things get to do certain certain abilities. Like this is the map of passageways. You can cross over one hazard. So like if you had to move, say from like here to here, and there's this volcano here, you could play this card, and then you can move in that direction. I mean, some of the other things that you can do. Actually, I'll just show them to you. Uh, mermaid, you uh, place this on any tile. The admiral or the navy ship uh, moves one space towards her for two turns, so you can go ahead and kind of pro you know project the movement of the admiral in the direction you want. The phantom ship allows you to move directly to any perimeter hex tile. You can just move there. An allied ship is nice because that allows you to actually capture two. Uh, capture two uh, uh, of the the merchant ships and deliver them both. And finally, the false flag. Uh, when the the admiral or the navy ship would land on top of you, you can play this, and you would avoid uh, one of one of one attempt at uh, capturing you. Um, you, you. That's the only time you can ever be on the same spot. So, like, if I was here, and I, you know, in the, in the and I had a, I had captured this guy or whatever, and the admiral comes and lands on top of me, and I play that card. Uh, that's the only time I can ever be in the same spot as him. As soon as I move off or he moves off uh, on the on successive turn, then you know 
I, it, my, my immunity is, of course, gone at that point. Now, when you deliver, uh, like one of these successfully, like I just did, wherever the Navy ship is, you take another merchant ship off the top, and you put it on there like that, and the merchant and the Navy ship start in the same spot. Since the Navy ship can move twice, they will eventually abandon each other, you know, because they'll, they'll be moving much faster than the merchant ship will be. Um, the other thing, thing, you can actually, as a pirate, you can attack another pirate if you land on top of them. In which case you roll a die. And each person rolls one die and the winner gets to leave with the ship. So it's, you know, there's some combat, but it's very simple and it's very straightforward. You just, you know, are able to, like, grab that. The other cool thing about movement is that Navy ships and merchant ships, actually, if their movement, say, like, it's up here and there's a one here. If their movement would actually, actually, that won't work, I apologize, but, like, let's say here. There are the two because there's a there's an obstacle right there. So you roll a two for the movement, and the Navy ship would move a two. They actually get to wrap around, like the old school uh, Atari 2600. You remember you move off the side, one side of the screen, you show up in the other one? They'll actually show up here, one, two. They'd actually do a wrap around. The same thing goes to the merchants. They can actually move off and show up on the other side of the board. So that's pretty much all the mechanics of the game. Uh, the turns are very fast. You just decide and move. You play until you get through all the merchant ships, and whoever has the most money at the end of the game uh, is the winner. Uh, other than that, um, you, you like I said, the whole thing is modular. You can make the map smaller by having less tiles. You can make the game quicker by getting rid of some of the uh, some of the, the the extra merchant ships and just have like you know, like they say if you want to play quick games, they say just have two merchant ships per player playing. If they want to have a longer game, you know, three or four or so forth. And so you can just change that however you want. And so if you want this game to last, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, you can make a game in the last 10-15 minutes. If you want it to actually last like a half hour or so, you can you can extend it out to be that long if you want. So, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, I've been having a lot of fun with it because of the fact that it's just this kind of whimsical, light-hearted pirate game, and I've never, I don't have something like this in my collection. I was really happy to have something like this that I can enjoy with my family and also my buddies, too. So, uh, but, you know, enough about that. I'll tell you more as far as that is concerned uh, in the conclusion, which you can watch uh, right now. All right, so there you go. That's uh, Raid Pirates Plunder. So, um, obviously, as, as I said, those are the prototype components. Um, the game might look, you know, different once it is published. Um, just so you know, for example, uh, my family and I, when we play, we actually use some of the um, the plastic uh, boat miniatures that we have uh, from the other uh, games, uh, other pirate games that I have, just to kind of add to the feel and the theme and make it kind of fun. And, you know, kind of like the whole, uh, as Scott Nicholson would say, have the little toys uh, on, on the table, and it kind of makes the game uh, kind of pop and, and fun, if, if, if what you will. But regardless, anyway, so what did I think? Okay, you know, obviously, like, it isn't super in-depth, I mentioned that in the introduction, but that's not what this game is supposed to be. This game is supposed to be kind of light-hearted, it's almost kind of like a race game, and it's like like a fun little race, uh, take that game. I really enjoy um, the, 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 the movement, the random movement of the, of the, uh, of the ships, and, and like uh, trying to put yourself in the position to like uh, be able to claim them and get them back to... Uh, Black Bart's Cove, so you can turn them in for points. I really enjoy the process of like those points. Once again, are the what the money is what you use at the end of the game to determine if you win or not. But you know, in order for you to do well, you need to get those extra special abilities so you can actually move around the board more easier, be able to claim more ships, things like that. And I always like games that do that. I like games that kind of just say you can spend some of your victory points, you know, in this case, money, uh, to enable yourself to get better. And I and I like um, that being made to make that decision. And and so you kind of have to play that off of each other and, and things like that. Um, you know, I as I as I when I was playing the game, I kind of went over a lot of what I'm saying right now, but. Um you know, if you're looking for a super in-depth pirate game, you're not going to find it here. But if you're looking for something really fun, and uh, the fact that the board constantly changes because you can set those tiles up however you like, uh, you can do it randomly, you can do it, uh, you know, just uh, like, you know, make a design or whatever. I usually let my daughter uh, design it. I just tell her, go ahead and, and make the ocean however you want. And then she uh, she has fun doing that and just putting everything together, and it's kind of like a neat little puzzle. And just 
And then that's what it is. It's kind of like a neat little puzzle. Every single time that you play, you start off, you put your you put your port down, and now it's up to you to figure out how to get your ship, you know, navigate, you know, around the ocean, around those hazards and things like that, and be able to claim um, the the merchant ships as quickly as possible. I really, it, I, I like the fact that I can actually take the merchant ships away from people too, and it's kind of fun to, like, because the fact that you're limited to two spaces of movement, I I do enjoy a great deal the fact that. Uh, you can kind of put yourself, you kind of can count the spaces and everything like that, and it's fun to watch my daughter actually figure that out, knowing that I can move two spaces and putting herself in a spot where, like, I can't get to. Like, if I move to, like, a space that's just uh, just close to her, then she knows she can try to land on me and take my ship away from me. And so I like the fact that, like, it, you're not rolling a die, you know, for your personal moment. You only move those two spaces. And, and, and I do love the idea of, like, moving um, my ship... Uh, close to like the Navy ship or whatever um, and they're just hoping and praying that like the next person doesn't roll like the exact number they need to come and land on top of me and take me and I really like and I, this has actually happened in a couple of games where um, you see somebody actually puts themselves and doesn't realize puts themselves in the path uh, of the Navy ship if they were trying to go to the tavern and, and, like, you can move to the tavern in your turn and make the Navy ship head that direction on purpose. And then they actually land on top of the person that uh, that you're trying to uh, sabotage, if you will. And so and there's all kinds of cool little fun things like that. And the whole reveal of how much money is in each one of the uh, ships. And, and the whole process is just, you know, lots of fun. And it's, like I said, it, it's lighthearted. It isn't a super in-depth game. But for what I wanted it to do, be kind of a filler, a family, kind of like, you know, it has some luck fest to it. But, I mean, um, I, I liked the whole process of it. I liked the whole process of uh, determining your movement, figuring out where you want to go. And more importantly, I really liked watching my daughter figure it out and watching my daughter, like, sit there and stare at the board and plan her movement. And it was just fun to hear, see, see those gears uh, clinking in her head as she uh, was trying to, like, put herself, uh, you know, to, to capture merchant ships and deliver them uh, to Davy Jones' locker, if you will. So, there you go. Um, I threw this away, but I <laughs> should pick it up again. Uh, Raid Pirates Plunder. Go ahead, check it out. Check out the, uh, the Kickstarter. Uh, and, and see if it's something that you might want to enjoy. If you have any questions about the game or concerns, you can post those. I'll answer those to the best of my ability. Uh, and until next time, thank you very much, as always, for taking the time to watch this video. And I'll see you uh, the next time you watch another one of these things uh, that I do. All right. You have an awesome day. Bye-bye now.